How's it going, everyone? Welcome to CCM Live. My name is Marcus. I'm your humble host. Thanks to those of you who stuck with us while the Google Gremlins were out in full force. It just happens sometimes. And you know what? You know what? It's almost Friday. That's what that means. Hey, uh, it's nice to see you guys. If you are watching live, I'm watching your comments like Micah. He said, hey. Hey. Uh, and we're, we're throwing these up. We're about to talk with Stephen Malcolm. And uh, I love it when you guys comment. I also love it when you hit share. So if you hit that share button, go select some individual people, tag them in the comments, write some comments, ask some questions. Uh, this is interactive. This is what we do here. So, uh, hey, Katie's here. What's up? See? Hey, hey. Uh, it's good to see you guys and uh, happy almost end of the week. So let's just get right to it. My guest today has been waiting around for 15 minutes while the Google Gremlins have been fighting me, but we win. And he's the first rapper on Word Entertainment's Four Against Five, hip hop imprint. I love it. He loves cereal. He loves his new wife and riding bikes. <laughs> it's Stephen Malcolm, everybody. Yes, here. How's it going? It's going well, man. We got it popping, so we good. We got it. Yes. Oh, how's it going? Eric and Casey, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, dude, the way we start the show is uh, we get to – you and I have talked before. We talked on a, yeah, on my, my old show, so this is cool. Yeah. And yeah. you're like you, – you've done a million gazillion things since then, but there's still people getting to know you. Something we do is everybody comes from a different space, you know, when they, when they pipe in. Uh, find something within your reach, a random object – Maybe not so random. That tells us a little bit more about Stephen Malcolm. Boom, right here, this pen. This, <laughs> what? This, this pen right here was in my reach. Um, <laughs> you you want to know how this is a part of my life? Is that yeah, what I do. I do. So, what is it? What, how do we learn about you with the pen? So interesting story is I used to get horrible grades in like writing classes and like Okay. I struggled with reading growing up. I had a like reading tutor, and uh, and now I use this pen to write my rhymes, which eventually created my ministry, which eventually spawned into a career. And so yeah. from this pen being used, I was used as a tool to use this pen to glorify Jesus. I love it. Oh, there, man. Other than that, I have this right here, which is beautiful because I love Little Caesars. Oh, is that what you have for dinner? Absolutely not, man. I'm trying oh. to get back into that gym life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that stage readiness, man. Yeah, for sure. So uh, another revealing question. What is a song or artist Stephen Malcolm fans would be surprised uh, like that you listen to, whether stylistically or whatnot, that, that you're vibing with right now? Oh, man. Um, well, man, I don't know the artist's name, but I have it on my phone. Hold on one second. I don't know if I'll close out. <laughs> He'll disappear. He's gone. Just like that. <laughs> he's got to find out, though. So, hey, well, in the meantime, post your questions. Oh, he's back. There we go. <laughs> oh, man. It, hopefully, it'll let him back in. Nope. That's not him. Oh, he's yeah. back. Welcome back. So I, I, I closed out, and I left, so I'm just coming right back. But no, <laughs> so I, um, if I'm not listening to, like, hip-hop music, or reggae music. Uh, yeah. I listen. I listen to jazz music like a lot of times, like right okay. before I, I perform. Really? I like you get name, chilled but... out before you turn up? Is that basically? Yeah, bro. It's like it's like the calm before the storm. Like, cause a lot of times artists like our mind is racing right before a performance. Like we're thinking about you know remembering the lyrics, remembering you know where we're supposed to be on the stage at this part. And like yeah. I, I used to do that a lot. But then I was at a show. I was actually uh, performing with Social Club. Okay. In uh, Battle Creek or something like that, and whoever the DJ was was playing like some super smooth jazz music, and it just made me like super relaxed. And I had a super like lit show that night. And ever since then, like I'll just be in the back stretching and listening to jazz music, and it just clears my mind, bro. So, so yeah, you're I'm like storing up that. energy rather than like getting getting pumped backstage. You're like you're like saving it all yeah. for the stage. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. good, man. Well, you just got married. Congratulations! Awesome year for you. Uh, how's married life been? What 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 are some things that uh, that you're you're learning already about marriage? 
Man, so marriage life, first of all, is a blessing. It is amazing. It is yeah. everything that I thought it'd be and more. So I'm super enjoying it. And I'm just learn. Honestly, bro, I'm learning as I go, man. Like, you know, I've, I've gotten <laughs> a lot of advice from people. And I, I, you know, I listen to it. I take heed to it. And, and I apply it to the best of my ability. But mostly, bro, like, honestly, I'm just embracing that husband role. Like, you know, doing... Yeah making sure things are held down at the house and, you know, before I leave, you know, to, you know, go on my trips or go on tour and stuff, just making sure wifey's set, you know what I yeah. mean? And yeah. she doesn't have to worry about much while I'm gone and just, you know, just embracing that husband role, bro. I'm loving it, man. Right. Making sure communication is everything. So there's that's, a lot of this, bro. That's right, man. So uh, where'd you guys meet? Man, we met at school in college, man. Uh, okay. I knew her sister. Her sister was, it, she's a hip hop dancer here in Grand Rapids. And so like, I knew of her, but we first crossed paths in college. So I seen awesome. her, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, yo, let me holla at Shorty real quick. <laughs> and bro, she kind of brushed me off. So oh, like, that's when you know it's love. Like, that's when you know it's love, you know what I'm saying? Because that didn't happen that often back in the day. That's right. Uh, so. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what, was, what was the best uh, dance song you had at your reception? man probably our first mm, nah probably uh man so she surprised so she dances like she used to dance back in the day but like i i never seen her dance before she's always like too shy to dance in front of me so she <laughs> never has and yo the the day of the wedding she comes out and her and her sisters come out and they just start turning up bro like so that was my favorite, like, dance part. And, like, I don't know. What was it, like, choreographed or were they just doing their thing? It, no, it was it was choreographed. Man, and What happened was literally, like, she used to hit me up, like, oh, hey, I'm going to work out. You know, I'll be back. And I was like, okay. And literally that whole time she was just going with her sisters and learning the dance choreography that they did at the wedding. So That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I love it when I've seen videos of that where people have come up with their whole choreographed dance, man. That's yeah, that's memorable. Awesome. How is uh, how's being married um, and and this whole new phase changed the way you write and perform music, or has it? Uh, it has not yet. No, like I've just been home, and I really like. Do I? This is like my first time I've been able to like have a break, honestly. Yeah. So like you know, literally before I got married, I was only really home like the last week. And like leading up to that Friday when we got married. So it was just like, I've been on the go, on the go. And then finally we got married. We went to Miami. I got to chill out. We've been, we've been back home. So I just been like at home, chilling with her, spending time. So literally I leave back out uh, Monday to start recording. And then the next following okay. week I'm back on tour. So it's just like my wheels are slowly going to start spinning again. And now I'll be in motion while married and I'll see how it goes. I think it's funny that your impression is that you've been slowed down because you had a huge 2018. You've released two, it, two, uh, did both of the second city parts come out this year? Both came out yeah, this year, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah so you've had two April, EPs, yeah. two EPs. You've done some touring. Uh, you, you've been busy and, and of course you've been writing all along. Uh, yeah. and, and I know you've, you've got more coming. What, uh, give, give us some highlights uh, from 2018 of, of just some of the things that were your favorite stuck out. Bro, hands down. So last week, um, my Fuego video that I put out has been getting mad attention. Like it's, yeah. it's a crazy dope video. And uh, so one of my homies hooked me up with a friend out in New York, a friend, uh, his name's Kelly. And bro, like last week he introduced me to like the the people and the the talent scouts and the coordinators and the programmers at BET Complex and Okay. Hope. Yeah. So like bro, like I grew up like watching BET, like you know what I'm saying? Like that was my media outlet. And then now like I remember working at Nordstrom and listening to Complex News in the morning and Revolt. And now it's like, yo, I'm sitting in the same room as these people who put the content yeah. out. And they're telling me that Fuego is super dope and like, you know. Yes. So that's really been a highlight. Of, oh, man, I bet. We're, when we were in New York City, like we had meetings on the rooftop and at Soho House. And 
Yeah, bro. Uh, like, that's been the highlight so far <laughs> of 2018, aside, of course, of getting married. Yes, so, of course. I, I love following yeah. your social media. And if you guys don't, you got to go look them up because – it, it just show you just show like you're having the time of your life. Like you're having so much fun. And you, like, you also, you, you also know like your mission. Like you're, you seem very, you know, you're having a blast, but you're also like, yeah. here we go. It's, it's time to work. And uh, Straight up. yeah, that's exactly right. Like, how would you say, so you've got the second city, which is like super autobiographical, you know, you've come out with part two, part one was really, um, about your father, part two is a lot more focused on on your aftermath and stuff like that. What, what, what? Um, how would you say your 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 storytelling and, and sort of the direction you've taken as an artist has has changed since that first EP? Yeah, bro, it's just gotten real, real personal, dog. Like, I've yeah. gotten to the point where it's it's changed for me to the point where at first I came in, and this is from records to re- to performing. It's like you know, I want to go in and give my best and win people over. I want to win people over. I want to show them this this gift that I got, and they're going to be blown away, and yeah. they're going to you know, become fans. <clears throat> well, now, like, I've really switched my mentality to, like, all right, I want to let my fans and the people who follow me now to really start getting to know who I am. So when I go to these shows, it's not like, oh, which song will get them hyped up? It's like, no, people came here to hear Fuego. People came yeah. here to hear Serial. And so it's just like now I'm making music that is really tied to who I am and, and who God is, has made me to be now and just putting that out to the world. And so people can really know who I am and relate to my story and my struggles and my triumphs, bro. How do you balance like this, you know, this story, which is uh, pretty heavy at times with uh, just, you know, everybody's knowledge and expectation of you as like fun upbeat turned up you know in, in the live setting like how do you balance that those two different sides of Stephen malcolm dog honestly bro it's just who i am bro like yeah, yeah this thing like man and I, like, I always tell people that this is the beauty of of what i do is like i didn't plan on doing this <laughs> like <straight laughs> up, like my life yeah. i did not plan on, on being a rapper and ministering the gospel around the world and it's just like something that like God put in front of me, you know what I mean? It gave me a choice whether to do it or not. So honestly, like what you see is really who I am, bro. Like, and people yeah. like at shows, like they're like, Oh, you're so humble. You're just a normal guy. It's just like, yeah, bro. I'm literally just a normal dude who <laughs> apparently can rap really well. And I love Jesus and, you know, I love kicking it with people and just cooling. So it's just, yeah. a, it's just a balance of really like knowing, I guess, I guess accepting the the responsibility of what I of what I have and what I need to steward and yeah. just really being humble before God and really just loving people and loving the Lord, bro. Well, that's good. And uh, what are some of the the things you're already hearing from people who have heard your story? Like I'm sure you get to talk after shows or you know on social media and stuff like that. What are what are some things that are sticking out to you with how your story has impacted people? Uh, it's just, bro, I, I always, I don't know, it's just always, I always get complimented and, and affirmation that, you know, I'm always getting better and better and better. You know what I mean? And, and growth to me is very important, especially as an artist. And I think any craft that people want to master, because I feel like if you are in something, you should really want to master that and, and really become yeah. the best at it. And it's just like, bro, I'm, I'm always a student of the game. I'm always studying and I'm always growing, bro. You always just have to grow, and not only as an artist, but spiritually as well. Because for what That's we true. do, there, they should be a, a level playing field as you excel. So yeah, and I saw that you uh, you posted like I meet with a pastor every week, and uh, and what's sure what's enough. that been like for uh, you know in this season as things have gotten crazy busy, uh, just to yeah. having that touch point every week. Was that meant to you, man? It bro, it's healthy because. Honestly, being an artist, bro, you forget one of the most important things as a Christian, and that is that you have to die to yourself. You have to die mm-hmm. to what you want literally every single day. So and yeah. as an artist, it's like we got people hitting us up every day. Hey, what do you need this? We go to a show. It's like, what do you need? Is the temperature good yeah. in the green room? Do you need some more <laughs> chips? Do you need this? You know, you get chaperoned around and stuff like yeah. that. So it's so it's so easy to fall into that 
mindset of just like, oh, like, you know, I can get what I want and do what I want. And then next thing you know, you get what you want. That's not necessarily good for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. man, with, with us in, in my church, I'm like, I'm here right now. Oh, nice. It's just like, yeah, it's like, bro, like staying plugged in to your local church and whoever feeds you spiritually is so important for your walk, bro. Cause like I've been down the valleys where I was disconnected from it and it wasn't good. You know what I mean? And so to, I've, yeah. I believe to stay healthy and stay focused on like mission driven, you have to, to be filled spiritually because as artists, we're always pouring out, you know what I mean? To these hundreds yeah. of kids, to thousands of people. Yeah. So it's just like, if you're not getting filled yourself, bro, you're going to be empty. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you're, you've been writing, you're getting ready to record a second city part three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's, what's that shaping up to look like? What, uh, oh, where does the story you. go from here? Bro, listen, so with part three and four, I'm literally, Oh, there's a four too. Absolutely, bro. Like, nice. bro, it's going to be a story, bro. So cool. with, like you said, like part one about my dad, part two gives a glimpse of like my story, bro. Part three is so like it's it's about the 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 downfall bro like even in this walk as christians bro like it gets harder because our eyes and our mind are open with conviction and we know lies and we know truth now and it's just like things get harder so there's falls bro like i've fallen you've fallen little bro behind me has fallen pastor has fallen we've all gone through those deep dark valleys yeah. So, and, 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 Okay, good. That wasn't just me. Sweet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. I don't know what's going on here. I'm making sure that the, the stream's still going. He disappeared. He's back. There he is. Where'd you go? <laughs> Are you back? Yo. Oh, no. You sound, you sound like a droid. <laughs> Yo. Are you on Wi-Fi? Back now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Hey, if you guys watching are seeing this, tell me if I'm crazy or not, and if uh, if it sounds like a droid, because to me, to, oh, there you go, Steven's back there. Oh, I'm back now. Yeah, you sounded like you were from Star Wars, like a droid, <laughs> like it was okay. So, so the last thing I heard for those those just catching up. As you were talking about uh, how it, this next story is about how we've all fallen, and then that's the last thing I heard before you turned into yes. RPG two. So, bro, we've all fallen, bro, and gone through those deep dark valleys, bro. Even myself, of course. And so, bro, that's what I'm talking about. Part three yeah, is all sweet. about is all about the fall, the struggle, and then the triumph and victories that is is at hand in nice. part four is all about the redemption and the victory, bro. Oh man. That's awesome. Did did you see this coming like when you started out with the very first one? Obviously it was called part 1, but at what point yeah. did this become a quadrilogy? The uh, the quadrilogy. <laughs> uh honestly, man, when did we decide So we we always knew there was going to be four parts cuz okay. we initially we initially wanted to drop them all this year, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to due to me being married, getting married. So I couldn't record yeah. as much as I wanted to. Sure. But um, let me get this Wi-Fi. <laughs> but next, but uh, so yeah, so we always wanted to do four parts, but literally, like I think, 
I think by part, when I was finished with part two is when I decided like, yo, I really need to make this a story and make this mm. a journey because it's called the second city. So it's like, yo, why not make people feel like they're going through a journey and experiencing oh, yeah. what I've experienced through my life. So turn up. Well, I love the, uh, I, I love the, the parallels, even with that name, second city, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the first one being gone, new city. I mean, as well as, you know, the, the actual, uh, historical significance to your family. Uh, you're headed out on the Bible tour uh, this fall. Yeah. Tell us about tell us about the tour, man. And is this your biggest one yet? No, nah, man. Winter Jam was huge, bro. Oh, that's right. You were Winter Jam. Yeah. That's right. That it, it doesn't get bigger than Winter Jam. It, yeah, I was gonna say it'll be hard to compete with that one. But um, no, nah, bro. This like I don't really know the expectations of it. Um, but from what I seen last year, it looks pretty, you know, pretty nice. But Honestly, bro, I do not know what to expect. This isn't even like a regular like tour, like this artist goes, then this artist goes. It's literally a collaborative show to highlight the Bible. And so like, yeah. the music, like I, I know I'm going to do my song even louder and then I'm going to be coming out and rapping verses on other people's songs. So that's what it's going to be. Man, that's going to be amazing. Yeah, bro. That's what so fans like, want. I mean, yeah. you know, and there's, special bro, there's experiences. So much, there's so much beauty in collaborations and so... Me, like, I started out a worship, uh, you know, a worship person at the church who led worship. And so now it's just like I can use this and grow from there. And, and this is a whole different yeah. atmosphere. So I'm just honestly looking forward to, like, taking in the experience and seeing how God wants me to grow in that atmosphere as, an, as a who rapper. Else, who else is with you on that tour? Uh, Matt Marr, Natalie Grant, um, uh, man, I forget the other people's names. I honestly like don't know them and never heard of them. So I'm looking forward to getting awesome. Getting yeah, man, uh, I I bet I bet a, a collaboration with you and Natalie Grant would be would be pretty amazing. Um, yeah, she, she loves she loves that record even louder. So there might awesome. be like you know a radio version or a remix with her on it. So that'd be that'd be what's up. I, I saw you talking about like kicking around that you're you want to headline a tour. If you yeah, could have. Yeah. Any artists join you? Who would you have join you on a tour like that? Uh, probably all my little homies. <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm the type. Your of day guy ones. That, yes, my day ones yeah. and, and all my my young bulls. I'm gonna bring with me so you know they can turn up with the kid. But uh, <laughs> if I had to choose, you know, someone you know to help me sell the tickets, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, I would. I would love to. I would love to do like a, a tour, another tour with KB. No, but oh, or social yeah. club, social club, bro. Them dudes are so cool. So like, oh yeah, be on the road with Marty and Fernie, like that'd be yeah. Because we had mad fun on the Temple tour. So oh man, I bet, I, mean, I bet that, I, I, bet, that, like, I bet that was a great tour. I feel like if me and me and Andy went on a tour and called it the Malcolm and Minio show, I think that'd be super lit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I mean, you, I, I feel like you, you're. You're like kindred spirits with Minio and with and with the Social Club guys. Have you uh, have you uh, heard anything about uh, Peabod coming out of Seattle? You heard about this guy, this nah. rapper Peabod? Nah. All right, you gotta look him up. He was on the show week one, and he's on Centricity, uh, that label, okay. and he's yeah, one of the yeah. he's their newest pickup, and uh, I, I think he's got the same. Uh, I don't know. I think I think you'd like him. You gotta go look him up. So. Uh, Oh, absolutely. So Ty Brazel, it finally, you finally got another roommate on the label. Finally a label mate, someone to yeah. join you. Uh, what's yeah. your relationship with Ty and, and how's it been uh, having having somebody else on 4 Against 5 with you? Ty's the homie, man. We uh, we haven't got to, to spend that much time together since Winter Jam. During Winter Jam, we spent some time together and it was super fun. Yeah. But now usually like when I'm in Nashville, he'll be back home or something like that. But Ty is cool, man. He's just a down to earth, normal dude, man. So, yeah, that's the home. It's 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 good to. I mean, that, you know, there's only two artists on the label right now, but that's it's pretty stacked already. So it'll be cool to see yeah. who's next. Yeah. Uh, finally, just how can all of us be praying for you as uh, as you wrap up 2018 and head into this tour and more music, all, marriage, all this stuff? What, how can we be praying, man? Just just pray that, that I continue to stay focused 
I believe that once I got married, God just basically said, here is a beautiful plate and you have a beautiful ministry. You have a beautiful career. You have a beautiful wife who you can love and you can trust. Now steward this to the best of your ability and stay mm. focused. And so honestly, bro, <laughs> just staying focused because I know I have a lot of potential. I know that, that God can open any door. And I know yeah. that I have the work ethic and the humility to to skyrocket, bro. So if I just stay focused, bro, everything will will go according to, to God's plan. Awesome. Well, if you guys are watching live, you're watching later, it all works the same. We're going to pray for Stephen while we've got him. So let's do it. Lord, yeah. just thank you so, so much for uh, just for an awesome story that you, you're you writing, uh, that we get to hear in the music, that we get to see lived out. Um, Lord, we just uh, I just thank you so much for the – um, just the different sides of Stephen that he's been able to show through his music, um, all all honest, all all pointing to you, Lord. Not always easy, not always you know upbeat, and sometimes it is. But God, you're you're in it all, and we thank you for that. Uh, just pray, uh, just like Stephen said, that he remained focused, that he uh, keep the people around him who challenge him to to grow and to uh, and to be the man that you've called him to be. Thank you for um, the awesome gift of marriage that you've given him and help him to uh, continue to um, put, put that relationship in, in that prime place, Lord, uh, because that's how you work on us and that's how you grow us and, and the best gifts are there, Lord. And so also uh, we just pray for uh, safety and for, um, for energy on the, the tour coming up. Let there be some incredible moments and, uh, and testimonies that come out of that. We just thank you, Lord, that uh, Stephen's having so much fun and enjoying uh, the gifts that you've given him. Help him never uh, take a moment for granted and and to uh, to rise to every every opportunity you've given him through your power. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my brother. Hey, it was a pleasure once again, bro. Yes, it was. And uh, and and man, everyone watching, you got to go check out Second City Part One, Part Two, the Fuego video. I mean. It's only the beginning, and 2018 is not even close to over for Stephen Malcolm. When's part three dropping? Uh, January. January. All right. That's what's going down. So Stephen Malcolm, check him out. Facebook, all the all the socials. What's what's your website? Is it StephenMalcolm.com? StephenMalcolm.com. StephenMalcolm.com. Check it out. All right. Thanks, my friend. God bless. Have fun at church tonight. All right. See ya. Hey, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks for bearing with us through the the the, uh, the weird the weird delay. I don't know, but we always appreciate you being here. Thanks for praying with us. Thanks for praying for these artists. Uh, make sure you keep them in your prayers throughout the week. We've got uh, an awesome week coming up next week, and we will uh, tell you about that on the CCM Live with Marcus Facebook page as well as CCM Magazine's Facebook page. So keep up to date there. If you don't like both of those pages, go like them. If you missed a single episode, head over to ccmmagazine.com. Click the Live with Marcus tab. You can see all of the episodes archived there. Or you can go to iTunes and in the podcast section, search for CCM Magazine, and you will find all of these in audio form. If you don't want to, uh, if you want to listen to these while you're driving or something like that and don't want to have to look at the screen, don't worry. You're getting the best stuff anyway. There's not a lot of visual cues. Uh, we'll be back. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. Thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Bye.